Hello everyone, Matt here. In today's videos, we are going to start a new series to teach you about the fundamentals of programming. Frameworks and tech changes all the time, but fundamentals are forever. I'm a huge advocate of that idea, and that's why the first series on this channel is about teaching you the fundamentals. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe to help me keep growing the channel. Algorithm and variables are the basis for any program. And there are a few things that we have to learn before we jump right into the keyword. Today, we are going to focus on those. So what is an algorithm? An algorithm is a sequence of logical steps to solve a problem, as easy and plain as that. There are multiple definitions that include other concepts, but for you that are starting into developing, this is the only thing that you care. A sequence of logical steps to solve a problem. Let's go through some basic blocks that an algorithm is composed with. Inputs, instructions, decision-making blocks, and outputs. First, we will focus on inputs and outputs. You have to think like the system and be the system. This is a kind of a little bit difficult when you are starting off because you have to stop thinking like you are the user and start thinking like you are the system. You are the computer, the process that is solving that problem. An input is the input to the process. And that can be, for example, the user typing in the keyboard. And that can be confusing because you are that user usually when you are testing your program. But that is the input to the process, to the program. Then the process itself is all the algorithm in code that will solve the problem through the logical steps that we talked before. And then it will produce an output. That is the result that will be shown to the user. So that is the super basic schema of any, progr or any program and any system. You have inputs, you have a process, and you have outputs. It is not only useful now when you are creating your first simple algorithms, but you, when you have to design almost every complex system, you have to think of this. Always think about interfaces. What is going in to your process, what your process have to do, and what is going out. We already saw what inputs and outputs are. We are missing instructions and decision-making blocks. Before we can define those two, we need to talk about variables. Variables are like boxes. You can imagine it like a box in real life. Okay, It's a place where you can put something inside it, and then you can go get it and put something else, or put the same thing. Right? That's how a box works, <laughs> basically. The only difference is variables in programming will be inside of memory and not in a physical box. And they have uh, some properties. A variable has a name, a value, and maybe a type. <laughs> For the purpose of this course, we are going to be working with types. I think they, they provide a great foundation to understand how all the typing system works. For now, just trust me, we will work with variables that have type. And later on, I will explain uh, why some programming languages use type and others not, okay? So, what is a name? A name is how you are going to access the variable, right? You need to, to have a, a way to reference that variable to access the value it has. The value is what is inside the box, of course, so it is what you put in that variable, in that box. You want to retrieve it, maybe work with it, maybe modify it and put something else. The value is what is inside the variable, right? And the type is like a constraint. It is a definition of what can go inside of the variable. For example, if you have, uh, you can have a simple box that in real life that you can put whatever inside it, or maybe you can have a shoe box where you can only put shoes, or maybe a food box where you will only put food. You wouldn't go and put shoes in your food box because that wouldn't make any sense. And in programming, there is a compiler that won't allow you to do that. If the language is typed, and your variable says in here should only be numbers, then you cannot put a string. You cannot put a date because that variable has a type and it says only numbers. Now that we have a good idea of what variables are, we can move on to the two missing blocks that we need to explain. Instructions and decision-making blocks. There are multiple things in programs that can go inside this category, but for now we are going to focus only in the top three, in my opinion, for a beginner declarations, assignations, and operations. Declarations is when you say to the program that you are going to have a variable. You are declaring a variable. You are saying, okay, this variable will have this type 
and this name. Only those two things, this type and this name. I am declaring I will use this variable, nothing else, okay? Assignation is when we put values inside those variables because we said it is a box, it has a name, the, the way I'm going to reference it, and then it needs values to be useful. And lastly, operations, you can think of, it, of them for now as arithmetic operations only, right? So when you do uh, 2 plus 5 or a variable that has a number plus something like 10 or, a, or an offset or something like that, okay? Of course, there are other operations. We are going to work with them probably in the next video. We can do operations between strings. We can do operations within complex objects. We, we will get into that. But for now, imagine them as arithmetic operations that you can do in your program. That will be instructions. And then we have decision-making blocks. Decision-making blocks are like when you are walking and you have a path that divides and you have to make a decision whether you go right or left. Imagine that. That is a decision-making block. It's an if. If this condition happens, I'm going to do one thing, and if not, I'm going to do the other thing, or take one path or take the other. In algorithms and programming, those two possible ways are another sequence of logical steps to follow for the program. Imagine the program is going through all the logical steps we have defined before, then it has an if, it has an if with a condition in here, and then it divides the path into two other sets of logical steps. So if the condition is true, then it will go to the right and say, okay, now I change the behavior and I'm going to do all these steps. But the, if the condition is false, then I'm going to do all this. For example, when you start the day, you look at the forecast and you say, okay, if it is hotter than 20 degrees Celsius, then I'm going to use just a shirt. Uh, or if it is colder than 10 degrees Celsius, then I'm going to put a, a jacket because I'm, it is going to be very cold outside. That is an example of an if. You have a condition to evaluate that can be true or false. And then you have two sets of logical steps to follow. That's a good idea about inputs, instructions, decision-making blocks, and outputs. I want to show you from, from my blog called Journey. You can have the link uh, in the description below if you want to read more about uh, any of these topics. In here, you can see an example of an algorithm. Algorithms can be drawn. If you take a course on algorithms, you will probably work uh, first on paper or maybe on a tool, and you will be drawing algorithms. We are not going to do that in here, but I just want to show you one so you can identify an algorithm if you ever are presented with one. and you say, okay, I remember that, I have to dig a little bit deeper into that to understand how uh, all these drawings work and what they mean, but you will have an idea. We are going to start directly working with code in the next video, instead of uh, going through all these algorithm steps. But to give you an idea, this is what an algorithm looks like. You will have a start point, then you will have the inputs that are put into variables, you will have uh, all the declarations, assignations, and operations. In this case, we have the three of them in just one draw, right? We are doing int result is the declaration of a variable of type integer, that is a number, and then we are assigning it a value of number one plus number two, and that is an operation because we are adding them together. And lastly, we are going to output the result that is that variable to the user, and this is the end of the of the algorithm. If you have any question, feel free to leave it below. I will read and answer every comment. That will be all for today's video. I hope you like it and learn something new. Don't forget to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. That helps me a lot. In the next episode, we will start coding and advancing towards more complex algorithm and exercises. See you in the next one.